I rise to speak on behalf of the Greens on the Roads Amendment Toll-Free Period Bill 2020, a bill that seeks to enforce a toll-free period for any new toll roads opening in New South Wales, and in addition to that, uh, enforcing of a toll-free period also stipulates that the private corporations who lose revenue during this can and should seek compensation for the, from the government uh, for the duration of this toll-free period, and that is left to the discretion of the government of the day to be able to make a decision on. As my Greens colleague, Avalette Gail Boyd, said in the other place, the Greens will not oppose this bill, but as she set out very clearly, there are very serious concerns about this approach. And she said, a holiday from a toll on a privatised road is like a try before you buy marketing scheme delivered on behalf of the toll road operator paid for by the New South Wales government. It could have the unfortunate effect of encouraging people to use a toll road when they would otherwise use public transport due to the comparatively lower cost. Once people give up commuting on public transport and get into their cars, it is very difficult to get them back onto public transport. And who would benefit from the habits being changed in favour of using those toll roads? Again, the private operators of those toll roads. They would be the one whose benefits. It is the Greens' view that this legislation doesn't really hit the mark. Instead, it skirts around the edges of a deeper and more systemic problem with privatised privatisation, privatised toll roads and the collection of privatised tolls on behalf of private corporations. It has been an unfortunate side effect of potentially inducing further demand, or this bill would potentially have the unfortunate side effect of introducing further demand for toll roads instead of moving people out of private vehicles and on to public transport. It is effectively a government cash handout straight to corporations. That is to recognise that people at the moment are doing it tough and we need to recognise that people have been slugged with big tolls in the middle of a pandemic where I appreciate that more and more people are choosing to drive because of safety reasons. That said, I think we need to look at the bigger picture here. The issue of tolls is a complex one and it's important for us to consider why it is that successive governments in New South Wales have locked our communities into these private polluting toll roads in the first place. Whilst the Greens don't support the private toll roads or that fleece commuters, there can certainly be a role and a place for tolls progressively taxed and directed back into the government that this bill fails to recognise. As my colleague Abigail Boyd said in the other place, not only can our government not redirect the tolls raised on our roads towards other infrastructure projects that benefit everyone in the state, but also every action by our government to alleviate the burden on poorer families has the nasty side effect of helping the profits of private road toll operators. Tolls per se are not the problem. The privatisation of our major infrastructure project is the fact that roads users in New South Wales were forced to pay more and more of their money on toll roads is a symptom of a much more serious and concerning disease, the privatisation of this state's assets. The result of privatisation is a self-inflicted inability of our government to provide relief to the people of this state when they need it without, at the same time, sacrificing scarce state revenue to line the pockets of private companies. The bigger problem here, or the question here, is why there has been bipartisan support by the old parties and an obsession by successive governments in New South Wales to building private polluting toll roads. In the second reading, introducing this bill in the other place, the, the Labor member introducing the bill stated that research by the University of Sydney's Institute of Transport and Logistics Studies found that Sydney has more kilometres of toll roads than anywhere else in the world. On behalf of the Greens in this place and in the other place, I think it is important for us to put it on the record that this regrettable situation is in no small part due to New South Wales Labor's willingness to support private toll, toll, toll roads in this state, especially the $20 billion WestConnex project and its planned offshoots, including the new Western Harbour Tunnel and more tunnelling for privatised single vehicle transport into North Shore and beyond, and prior to that, their obsession with toll roads when they were in government. What our community wants and what our community needs is world-class public transport. We recognise that road tra transport has a role to play, but we need to recognise the way that we deliver that in the interests of our community and in the interests of our state is not by privatising these toll roads so we lose control over them. Is this bill 
simply aroused, disguised as a concern for commuters and others' users who are being forced to use these privatised toll roads. A way to say, oops, sorry, uh, we failed to oppose these privatised polluting toll roads when they were being built, and now you're being slugged with massive costs to be able to get where you need to go, where we're going to offer you a toll-free period just to allow you to get through. After supporting more and more privatised toll roads, or at least the failing to oppose them, it is slightly disingenuous and, to say the least, a little disappointing to now see New South Wales Labor members stand here years later and call for a toll-free period, pretending that they care about those being hit with healthy tolls when we knew that these tolls would slug people in their hip pockets because of the private profits and private interests that were building these toll roads in the first place. Particularly when is the New South Wales Labor, particularly when it's New South Wales Labor that has been part of enabling and facilitating the wholesale privatisation of road transport and toll roads in this state. Now, the Greens have stood strongly against the New South Wales government's neoliberal obsession with toll roads for many, many years, showering billions of dollars onto willing conglomerates to slash and burn tunnels through our suburbs and locking us into decades of tolls, which, as the member in the other place noted when introducing the bill, are increasing at about 4% annually. The Greens have echoed many in the long calls for real investment in world-class public transport, and that means across the whole state. Where there is a vision for world-class public transport, why instead are we seeing a concerted program driving people into more and more polluting toll roads and off our public transport and active transport systems? Serious issues with the, protest, with the process used around prioritising some of these toll roads is most clear in the issue of WestConnex. As my colleague in the other place outlined when speaking to this bill, she set out that WestConnex is the latest in a long line of privatised toll roads in Sydney and perhaps the best example of this insidious obsession with privatisation by successive governments and the impact it has on the commuters forced onto these roads. Two Auditor-General investigations into this project exposed just how not properly established and not in the public interest it was to be able to deliver on this, as well as the financial risks. And we are now seeing this being played out, as the company that's got most of the toll concessions in this country, Transurban, is now in financial strife. This Liberal National Government sat on recommendations for amendments to the Just Turns Compensation Act, which would give people whose homes were compulsorily acquired fair compensation so that hundreds of people were not, were not able to get fair compensation for their home as a result of this privatised toll road disaster. In September 2016, the Finance Minister, Dominic Perrottet, revealed in a budget estimates hearing that 1,713 properties had been acquired for infrastructure projects in the last four years and that 111 properties were still yet to be acquired for the WestConnex project. How many of these people received just compensation and were treated with dignity? and respect. The complete failures of successive governments in New South Wales to take notice of the global trends when it comes to building toll roads is beyond belief. Global trends show many, many countries removing their toll roads, investing in efficient public transport. We know that building toll roads actually does induce more traffic, especially if you don't provide alternative options for commuters, which is in the case such a problem, particularly for those living in Western Sydney. Toll-free periods may sound good, but what does that mean in terms of compensation to private companies? What does that mean in terms of public money going back into private toll companies' hands? Some of the toll roads, like the M8, are not even being used at present with recent messages sent to me showing pictures of toll roads like the M8, part of WestConnex, virtually empty at present, with drivers avoiding them in droves. Trucks we know are rat running through local suburbs to avoid paying the high tolls, and people are doing it tough by choosing to sit in tr traffic and congested areas rather than having to find the money to pay the tolls. This is a lose-lose scenario. Privatised roads are not in the public interest. The public needs fast and accessible public transport and not these kinds of white elephants. The reality is that we do not know any of the details around some of these contracts for these private toll roads. We do not know what the penalties are, big penalties, and that should any government build an alternative transport option that would offer an alternative option for commuters, particularly in Western Sydney, that would stop them using a private toll road, what kind of money and compensation we would be up to to have to pay. 
As I said, the Greens won't oppose this bill because we recognise that we have come to a situation where sadly toll roads and massive to polluting toll roads are part of this reality of this state right now. But we must put on the record our objection to the idea that we are coming in after the fact to try and stop this problem when really we should have been stopping the privatised toll roads in the first place.